Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hi there, my name is Faisal Khan, Cisco Voice Instructor at Voice Bootcamp. In this particular module, I'm going to focus on the non-native components of CVP. In the previous slide, we talked about the native components which are built in or around the CVP application. Non-native components of CVP include Ingress, Egress, Voice, Cisco iOS Gateway, VXML Gateway, Unified Presence, Unified SIP Proxy running on iOS uh, Gateway, Cisco Unified Contact Center Enterprise, IC, or known as ICM sometime, Media Server, ASR, TTS, C CSS 11,000 series content switch services or ACE 4700 series application, Unified Communication Manager and Unified Border Element. Now, Ingress and Egress Gateway can be uh, can be gateway might or might not be co-located with the same device. This Ingress Gateway is connected to service provider where it will receive calls from the customer clients into the contact center environment, either through CVP deployment or ICM. The Egress Gateway is used when the call needs to be extended to the traditional network, such as sending calls to PSTN or a mobile network. SIP message should go through a SIP proxy function recommended. If none is deployed, then SIP message can go directly to the call server. So you have a choice, sending calls from the ingress gateway to a SIP proxy, which could be either presence or could be either a SIP proxy's device or third party SIP proxy, and then from there it goes to call server, or send the calls directly to the CVP call server components. A VXML server, which can be co-located on the ingress gateway or a dedicated uh, a gateway, depending on the scale. So obviously, if it's a small, you can use the same gateway as ingress or egress. Or if it is a large deployment, then it recommends that you have a separate router that acts as gate, a VXML gateway. Now, VXML gateway, which is Cisco iOS router, runs the voice browser on the gateway. And it will interpret the VXML document. Now, VXML documents can can come from uh, can come from the VXML server or I, uh, IVR services on the call server. Now, when invoked by the VXML document, a speech recognition or text-to-speech servers can be used. So, in case if your application involves in, like for example, a command-based uh, solution where you say, "Please enter the tracking number" or "Please and uh, say your account number," where you will the system will try to recognize your voice or what you have said and convert it to a command, then you need to use ASR or TTS application. Now you can store all these prompts, the media files, in on an external media server, which is on basically a web server. Now the presence, which provide a weight based, uh, weighted load balancing and redundancy service, it is used for centralized dial plan configuration. Uh, presence can be used to uh, install on a dedicated server because it requires its own application uh, OS and it can be used uh, as a SIP proxy as license feature of the presence 8.0 so think about Cisco presence as a centralized so when you have a receive when you receive a call from an ingress gateway the call will go to the Cisco unified presence and from there it can go to the call server it can go to call manager it can go to an ingress gateway as well Cisco SIP proxy server. Now, if your environment cannot does not have a Cisco SIP presence, which is for large deployment, Cisco recommend you to use Cisco SIP proxy server, which is stateless, which provides a better failover and redundancy, and has a better uh, n n plus one redundancy redundancy than the unified presence. Now, use centralized dial plan configuration. It requires an SRE on the router I in ISR. Uh, it supports SIP server groups and heart beating. It's a new feature of Cisco Unified CVP 8.0. So basically, a SIP proxy server is a router-based solution with a special SRE, iOS configuration, SRE, and it requires you to configure a uh, few settings before the router can act as a SIP proxy server. Again, a SIP proxy server, in this case, can receive a call from an ingress gateway, can receive a call from ingress gate, uh, can send a call to ingress gateway, or call manager as well as call server. Cisco ICM, which is uh, an enterprise contact center enterprise, is required for advanced call control. Now, CVP can send or receive 
uh, zip headers and UUI uh, uh, to the ICM scripts. The user server will connect to ICM VRU uh, via the VRU peer, peer peripheral or PG. Now, in Cisco Unified VRU peripheral gateway will then translate the call between the server and ICM service. The script editor, which is used to create a script to, call, to control the call, uh, of course, separate script than the one that is for design for CVP. You should use IVR scripting in ICM, known as a micro application, only for queuing logic. It used call, uh, call Studio to dev develop and deploy more advanced logic and function. Media Server, on the other hand, is a, a basically a web server. It can be simple as Microsoft IIS or Apache. VXML Gateway can have media files stored locally uh, or it can be stored in a media server. Now, if you're going to store the file locally on the flash, which is fine, but then, then again, you're limited by your flash size. Whereas you can store it on a media server on an external uh, web server where the router will be configured to pull the media file from the external web server on demand basis. Now, when it, the only dependency is that the web server must be always up and running. So the router will retrieve the file from the media server that can be cached on the voice XML gateway for a certain amount of time. So that in the future, when those same files are required, they, didn't, they don't need to be communicating with the media server. Now you can have multiple media servers for redundancy and load balancing purpose. And if, if, if you want to achieve load balancing, you can use the CCS, sorry, CSS 11,000 or ACE series. <coughs> now ASR and TTS, these are specialized servers, neon servers from various third party company provide uh, automatic speech recognition as well as uh, text to speech services. These are optional, not all deployment requires such uh, servers. These are third party server providing uh, ASR and TTS services. Now, Voice XML Gateway will use the MRCP protocol, Media Recording call, uh, Control Protocol, to communicate with ASR and TTS server. You can obtain a license from a third party vendor to use these services. Now, of course, if you have multiple ASR and TTS, you can use a server load for a uh, server farm for load balancing. Uh, if you want to use uh, CSS 11,000 or ACE 4700 series appliances. Now, the content switch, which is again optional, can be used uh, can be sit between the voice XML gateway and various servers such as VXML, media server, ASR, and TTS server. It provides failover if a server, one of the server, fails in the farm. Of course, it's used for high uh, intelligent load balancing. Use VRRP, which is very similar to HSRP, uh, between the two CSS devices with one virtual address, so that when one device uh, goes down, the second device will continue to function because they share the same virtual address. Now, the virtual address is where the traffic will be pointed to. And of course, it is invisible from the VXML gateway. All the, all the VXML gateway knows is an IP address, which is a virtual IP, hope, pretending to pretending that to be the VXML server. But in reality, that is the IP address of the C, CSS. CSS receives the traffic and will then distribute across the multiple VXML servers that you have or provide load balancing. <coughs> Cisco ACE 4700, which is also an optional component, sits again between the VXML gateway and the various components such as ASR, TTS, Media Server, and Voice XML. It provides failover if a server farm fails, and it provides intelligent load balancing as well. So same similar concept to Content Switch, but ACE point be for smaller deployment, or Content Switch could be for larger deployment. Uh, Unified Call Manager, which is set up and tear down call calls to IP phone, is required by CVP or for context center enterprise calls, internal help desk calls, as well as agent trans transfer to another queue. So if you are going to be responsible for dealing with IP phones, which are obviously registered to Call Manager, then the Call Manager has to be part of your solution and have, the, have to have the ability to communicate with the CVP for call transfer, help desk, and internal calls. Cisco Unified Border Element, which interconnects two different IP network, it is act as a demarcation point between the two network, could be used to provide uh, uh, large-scale deployment. 
Uh, think about any of our borrow elements like a replacement for gatekeeper. It is responsible for establishing calls between the two VoIP providers. It can provide secure connection on an enterprise by hiding the internal network by doing a proxy so that all traffic, both signaling and media traffic, will go through the uh, unified border element. Of course, there's a drawback to that because if in case uh, there's a lot of calls, then the uh, particular router will be overloaded. It runs as a feature of iOS, uh, iOS, so therefore you don't need to install a separate server. And of course, it requires flow through media of the flow through med uh, mode of the media. That means all signaling and media has to go through the router itself, not between the endpoints. So as we've seen, the functional overview of all these applications they are uh, deployed in various part of your deployment. As, as you can from here, if you take a look at from the PSTN perspective, the call will first arrive in the Ingress Gateway. From Ingress Gateway, the call will be sent to SIP proxy server, or it can go directly to the call server. Now, assume that call is going to a SIP proxy server or SIP server, will, which will then send the calls to SIP services within the CVP. Now, once the call comes in SIP, from there various activities take place. Using ICM, the call can go to ICM server for call queuing or executing a script, and then come back to the CVP CVR. So I'll walk you through the call flow in the next few slides as we go along. So this will conclude our uh, nat non-native components explanation of some of the services that are involved or certain devices that are involved in CVP.